Hi guys, so uh, welcome back to the channel and today I've got a, a review of this new Montane Lux jacket that I bought a couple of months ago. So I just wanted to bring you a uh, four part review which I've done over the last two or three months and uh, tell you what's good about it and uh, what's not so good about it. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to put uh, the bell notification on and give it a like. And if you really enjoy this video and you want to see some more kit reviews, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, hope you enjoy the video. So hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and I've got another kit review to do today. I've got uh, a new arrival, I've had this a couple of weeks now and um, just coming out to give it a bit of a test in some pretty damp conditions and uh, it's been raining before, so I'm hoping when I get on tops, I can really test out this Pertex outer shell on this Montane Flux jacket. So um, a quite a simple and design jacket. I think it's a belay jacket for those of you who are more into uh, mountaineering and climbing, but it's designed to be worn at altitude if you're standing around and you want to throw something on that's relatively light. And uh, I'll put the, uh, the measurements, the, the actual more technical measurements about the coat, the weight, etc and more information about all the actual insulated primer loft filling around the coat. I think there's 100 here and there's 60 in the uh, shoulders, but I'll do more detailed review when I'm in the house and the wind won't uh, interfere with the audio too much. But initial impressions, I really love this coat. This is one of those coats that you put on straight away and uh, it just feels right. The primer loft that was out today, admittedly in town in the rain, got caught in the rain and this thing didn't wet through. Now I think they class it as highly water resistant but uh, initial impressions of this outer shell and I'm gonna test it as I said at altitude we're on the hillside here I think it's around about 500 meters but uh, I will test it out in Snowdonia and make this as part of the full review of this coat. The thing that attracted me to this coat was two things really one the affordability of this coat I got this um, in this color not to everyone's taste, I guess. Uh, Firefly, I think they call it, like a flame red. This was down to about 108, and I think it retails normally around 150. In some places, uh, as high as about 170, 180. So, good discounts to be had, if you don't mind the, uh, the rather in-your-face color, which I like. And um, the fit on this, this is a medium. I'm a 40 chest. And in height wise, I'm about six. seven, five, seven, I think at most. But you can see it's quite a long coat uh, around the back side here. This draws down quite a lot, so it keeps your body nice and warm. And as I said, it's, it's relatively light. So you can put this in your rucksack and it stuffs down quite well. So I'll demonstrate that in the house. Push it in your rucksack. When you need it on an altitude, it will uh, give you that much needed warmth. So I think. In terms of Montaigne's range at the moment, there's a lighter jacket called the Prism, and then there's a couple of uh, heavier weight jackets, which I know they produce, but this is somewhere in, in between. And I wanted particularly not a down jacket, because I've got a few of those now. I wanted a synthetic inner lining to give me that warmth. And when it gets wet, it retains or it acts in, um, it behaves better in wet conditions. So uh, I'm interested to see how much this will take. Now it's pretty misty and damp today, there's no going to be major rainfall, but I'll get on top and see if it changes, hopefully it will. But the uh, just some other key features on it, like I said, pretty simple jacket, nice bit of Velcro here to close the, uh, the ends of the arms and to keep the heat in. Two chest pockets here, Napoleon pockets here, so big enough to put a phone in, and I would say an OS map, not big enough, I would say. And then there's two side pockets here, two drawer mechanisms here, so you can cinch the coat in. They're really easy to use, easier on some of my mountain equipment coats I've had. And again, the hood here, which I've cinched down here, but you can do it on here either side. So this cinches down really. So you can hunker down it, keep the wind out. That's obviously one of the major features. It's wind proofness this jacket and there you go a really good enclosure over your face to keep you protected from the elements and again on the back again, really simple to use these cinching mechanisms on this car I really like it and um, that would obviously make it easier to use 
with gloves. I haven't got those on today because it's not cold enough. But I'm going to put this away now, get on top and um, see what the elements can throw at this jacket and see how it performs. coming in towards this hill which is Penaclodii we're on here Penaclodii and uh, well I'm going to stay here a while and hopefully we'll get to the rain so we can test this coat out so um, as you can see the wind's picking up a bit and uh, the insulation qualities on this are, are pretty impressive now as I said uh, it is the beginning of October in the UK I think the temperatures are around 10 so it's not it's not super cold by any stretch of the imagination, but the insulation qualities are, it's keeping me warm, it's keeping the wind out, and uh, I've only got a cotton t-shirt on uh, underneath me, I've only got a t-shirt underneath me, and I'm, I'm warm, I'm warm under here, so I've uh, had to uh, sort of ventilate a bit and I come up the hill, generate some heat, but the coat's doing what I want to do, it's nice and lightweight this coat, so, so far so good. One thing I have noticed, the zipper, and I'll show you at the back of the house, bottom of the zip is a bit, a bit fiddly and uh, just off camera there is closing the pocket and the inside material which is the, uh, the Perte I think it is inside the coat that got stuck in the, uh, the, the side pocket zip so I'll show you that so you have to be a bit careful and I think that's um, a result of the type of materials on this coat I've got a similar smock by Ridgeline with this type of material on and again that just tends to get caught in the zip so I have to be a bit mindful of that so be thoughtful that this isn't a super thick outer so it is lightweight it's pertex it's designed to be lightweight and give it optimum insulation anyway let's see there you go see the rain coming in So, as you can see, we found the rain, so perfect conditions to give this uh, Montaigne Flux jacket a real workout and see how it uh, stands up this Pertex membrane with this type of rain. So it's pretty full on this morning, so it's exactly what I needed really. This walk I'm going to take is about a 40 minute walk and there's some elevation, so it probably get windier up on top and it's pretty grim. Um, I'll just show you here, look, you can see straight away the Pertex is doing its job and that's beading off there quite nicely as you can see hopefully you can see that on the camera so we're going to give it about a 40 minute walk in this rain and we'll see how we get on but as you can see pretty grim conditions Perfect. As you can see, the, uh, the conditions of the are pretty grim and i um, been out now for about 20 minutes, half an hour and uh, I think if you want rain, you want to test the rain jacket these are the conditions so um, there's a bit of an elevation on this walk so I've generated some heat so when we get back to the car, I'll see uh, the inside of the coat see how damp it is and see how well it's held out but relatively speaking the outer shell of purse tech seems to be doing its job pretty well you can see they're beading on that's really really good and uh, 
I've sort of been out for about 30 minutes now, so it's a pretty good test of this coach's abilities. Now, Montaigne sell this as, I think I said on my previous video or my the section before, they sell this as a water resistant coat. It's not waterproof, it's all water resistant. But I wanted to test how well it held up, and so far so good. I'm pretty impressed with it, really. Now, I know what I say, one of the points or one of the drivers for me buying this coat was it's synthetic, so although it might take in some of the moisture, it reacts well and better than down. Down will just get ruined, as we all know, in the outdoors uh, field. But in terms of this jacket will retain some of the heat, and I can say I've only got a wicking t-shirt underneath, and uh, I am warm as. So I've uh, generated some heat, now I've stopped, and I'm doing that on purpose to see how, long, how far my core temperature drops. Hi guys, so I'm uh, back at the car and uh, I've just opened my jacket here and uh, not so much the rain but this coat generates a lot of heat so I guess that's why it is marketed as a belay jacket something you put in your rucksack go it uh, on the hills on the mountain tops and if you want some warmth insulation this is the jacket uh, I've walked probably about three miles some elevation but uh, as I said, this, uh, the windproof from this is really, really good on a dog walk. That's, you know, local dog walk. The waterproofness is held up. Uh, water resistance is held up. That you saw the Pertex doing its job. But this jacket does generate a lot of heat. So my wicking t-shirt is quite damp with the moisture from what I think is more to do with my body heat. So it's um, relatively mild. So I say this is a winter jacket, not an autumn jacket. But um, part three of this test is I'm going to go and do Snowdonia in what will be November, the end of November, and we'll see how it gets on there. And I think that'll be the jacket sweet spot is something you can put in your rucksack and get on top of the summit where it's going to be bitterly cold and um, throw this over and it'll give you instant heat. And then you're coming off the mountain, it'll do its job in terms of insulation. And uh, OK, so part three coming up. Morning, guys. It's... Uh, I'm just going to throw in a, a lowland walk with this uh, Montane Flux jacket. Now this walk is uh, one of my favourites locally, it's the Alwyn. It's about an eight mile, seven and a half mile circular. So you can see with the sun in the back. I've just got a wicking t-shirt underneath and uh, I'll be interested to see how, we, how much heat it keeps in. It's, uh, it's quite fresh this morning. It's, as you can see, the sky is nice and clear, and uh, it's about it's about six degrees the uh, temperature this morning. So nice and fresh. Well, I'm a couple of miles in, and as you can see, the flux jacket's had to come off. It's uh, definitely as as designed a belay jacket. You know, this this jacket is designed for insulation and. Uh, I guess windproofness, you know, you're standing around, you want to keep the cold out. That's what it's designed for. But it's not a, in terms of breathability, yeah. you know, that it generates, your body generates that heat. You start walking and it soon becomes very, very warm and you start to sweat sort of uh, from the inside out. Well, you start to sweat, don't you? But, you know, horses for courses, as they say. And uh, that's the whole idea of me testing out this kit so you guys know what you're what you're buying but this would be a great jacket as i said if you've uh summited somewhere like snowden you know and you're on the tops so you want to get out your bag throw it on you're going to get instant warmth for this coat it's an absolutely fantastic coat from that perspective but you know that's why when you're buying different bits of uh kit for walking you've got to really consider what it is you want. So like, for example, I've left my keb jacket in the car today, but I would have probably been better wearing for hiking because it's breathable at the back. And, uh, you know, it allows you to breathe. So I'll, that would have been a better jacket for today. But that's the whole idea of the test to see how it gets on. So uh, it's, uh, it's nice and crisp this morning. You can see it's clear sky. And uh, when I stopped a bit, I'll throw the jacket back on 
and that'll give me the warmth that I need. So uh, there you go, part three of the flux jacket test. And the next part, the fourth and final part, will be when I do Snowden or a river for my Welsh friends um, at the end of November or the middle of November. So um, we'll really give it that uh, ultimate test. And I think, as I said before, that's going to be what it's designed for. OK, part four coming up. Just about five degrees, maybe. When I get back to the car, I'll let you know how it's performed, but it's neat, and for 108 quid, it's a real bargain. So, hi everyone, I'm back in the uh, house now, as you can see, and I uh, just want to share my sort of summing up part of the video, really. So, uh, just to give you my thoughts on the jacket and uh, how I've experienced it over the last three months. So what I've do is I've got some uh, positives and some um, some negatives, of course. It so I've got a, a slide which I'll put in in the video, so you can you can look at the list what's positive and what's uh, not so good about the jacket. Now I'll go through them: positive, negative, positive, negative. You'll get an idea of uh, the the scores, but as I've, as I've called it now, uh, overall I think there's a seven. There's more positives than there are negatives. So that's the good news, and I'll just walk you through them. So. First and foremost about this jacket, I've got some notes here, so um, this is where I'm referring to. So, the first thing to say about this coat is the warmth and the insulation on this jacket is just second to none. Um, I've never, uh, I haven't got a coat as warm as this. Um, this is Primal Off Silver, and I know they do a gold, but certainly for from my experience, and the uh, weight ratio, I think that's the important thing. So the weight ratio and the heat it retains is Pretty phenomenal actually for this jacket. I'm really impressed by it. So Primer Loft Silver does the job. And I'm, I'm, you know, whether I'd go for what a gold one, I don't know, because I think that might be too warm. Now, one of the things about this coat, which is a bit fiddly, and I've now worked out, and it sounds an obvious thing about the zipping mechanism on this. This is a two-way zip on this jacket. And I think the idea is when you're belaying and you've got some um, climbing equipment around you, you can open the jacket to ventilate as well, and it's easier to do that you know, both ways. But one thing just to know about this jacket, I've now worked it out, but when you actually engage the zip, I suppose that's the correct phrase, in order for it to operate smoothly, you've got to really press it into the bottom of the zip mechanism there. Now, that sounds obvious, but when I first got this jacket, wasn't doing that and it does tend to it appears to be snagging but it's not so when you get this jacket just something to watch out really for because um it's, it won't particularly it's not the zip that's the problem it's the way that um it's designed you'll feel it click into place and then once it's that the zip engages properly so just something to be mindful of i thought it was a fold but it's not it's just the way the coat's designed another uh Thing to point out, the uh, water resistance, the shower proofness of this coat. Part of the review, you'll see I went out on top of a local hill with the dog and it was tipping down. I was out for about 40 minutes and the outer shell, this Pertex shell, which I believe is recyclable anyway, that's a good point to mention, is um, it really stood up the test. I mean, it's just amazing. I've got hard shell jackets, which I don't think perform as well. So it's not waterproof. But certainly in the rain, the conditions I tested it in, you'll see on the video, it lasted up and it was fantastic. So that was really, really good. Something to, I'll, I'll try and put this the segment in, the side profile of this jacket, this jacket's not an active cut. So when you wear it and with the zips open, they do tend to sort of bulge out a bit, which is, you know, that's just a particular taste thing. You'll either be bothered by that or you won't. Uh, just something to mention. Windproofness as well, positive. Um, again, on top of the mountain, I'd been generating some heat. My body core, you know, my wicking t-shirt was sort of wet underneath mm -hmm. uh, because uh, of the heat retention in this jacket, which we'll talk about in a minute. But in terms of when I zipped it up and the wind was on my back, my core temperature didn't drop and I very quickly retained my normal temperature when I was warm on top of that uh, mountain as I was on the summit in, on Snowden on Sunday it was now. 
lack of breathability. So this coat, I would say, is not a walking jacket. It's a belay jacket. It's something you would throw in your bag. Again, on the mountain, or I some uh, did the pig track on Sunday. Snowden, I didn't wear this jacket. I wore my Kev jacket, which is breathable at the back. It generated a lot of sweat on the ascent, and I was able to sort of keep my temperature regulated. And at the top, as you see on the on the video, I put that on the summit by the cafe. And again, gave me that instant uh, heat. So that's just something to know. This isn't a, there's no pit sips on this uh, jacket. And uh, you'd have to, if you're going to walk any length in it, uh, you'd generate a lot of heat. So just to be careful, you know, just be mindful of that. Now, on, again, I think it was the lowland walk that I did around the locally, the Alwyn, which was about, it's about seven and a half miles. You saw in that video, after two, two miles in, I had to take the jacket off because we were generating a lot of heat. So just something to be kind of aware of. Another positive, the price point. I got this for £108 online. You can pay a little bit more for different colours. You can go black, um, black and grey, blue. They're about 150 mark. But for value for money, what this coat offers and the price point, I just can't fault it. It's really, really good. Talked about the breathability. Talks, as I said, it generates a lot of heat. So again, something to think about. Uh, but on the positive side, it's great for cold weather, isn't it? Of course it is, because it keeps you really toasty warm. As I said before, it's not a walking jacket. I wouldn't class this as a walking jacket because um, it is a belay jacket. It's all about insulation. So you're going to use on the on the mountain tops to get you that warmth straight away and that quick fix of uh, heat. On the upside, this coat, because it's synthetic, it's easy to look after. So I threw this in the washer yesterday and it just washes dead, uh, dead easily. Put it on a like, 30 degrees wash easy to maintain, easy, easy to look after. And of course, I wouldn't put this in the tumble dryer because it'd probably shrink. So I just dried it on the line because windy day yesterday. Easy to maintain, uncomplicated and no faff. That's what I like. Side pockets, I've mentioned about those. The hood on this positive is helmet compatible. Of course it would be because it's I mean, more of a, a mountaineering belay jacket where people are more likely to be wearing, well, they would be wearing helmets doing that activity. So the hood goes easily over a uh, climbing helmet. And just something else, the last positive is the inside material of this is quite, well, it's, it's very, it's sort of slidey. So it slides over your mid layers and your base layers. I've got other smocks, I've got fleeces inside and they're really difficult to uh, get over any base layers it just makes putting on the garment sort of that much more difficult and you don't want to be messing around one thing i've just thought about now as well is because of this outer material is quite thin i guess you could be careful in terms of you know you wouldn't wear this in the woods because it's snag easily but and also something um i mentioned this i don't know where you pick up on the audio but because of the inner lining is this material when you're doing the zips up you gotta be careful it doesn't snag or getting caught in that, so just something to think about. But overall, over the last three months, I've really enjoyed this jacket. It's getting a bit colder now, so it's gonna really come into its own. And uh, for the price, what I paid, I think Montaigne has got it right on their price point, and this jacket sits somewhere in the middle of their range. I know they've got more expensive jackets, but this is exactly what I wanted, and it's really delivered. So again, not for everyone. I think the uh, the fact that the um, you know the side the profile of the jacket it may be not what you're looking for. The material does tend to snag in the zip sometimes, but um, overall the positives outweigh the negatives. And I would definitely buy this coat again if I was looking for this similar type of uh, jacket in the future. So I would recommend this based on my experience and how, what the tests have put it through. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed doing the video. Uh, gone out a few times, as you can see in the video, and spent my time doing it. Really give this coat the thumbs up and would recommend it for you if you wanted a belay jacket for instant insulation and warmth. And uh, great jacket. So if you've enjoyed this review, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and put the bell notification on. And if you've really enjoyed this uh, review and you want to see some more kit reviews, so I want to share those with you. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Anyway, hope to see you all very soon. Take care, guys. All the best.